So good evening and welcome to the MTU Succeeding Together series. My name is Sharon Lawton and I'm the Science for Life Officer in MTU Bishopstown Cork. The Science for Life programme promotes science and education in schools in the community with programmes such as the January Labs, Science Buddies, the Science Week programme, the Engineers Week programme um, and SciFest. This year has been an unusual year, as I'm sure you'll all agree, and we have endeavoured where we can to provide most of our programmes online. So we moved in particular our VEX Robotics and our Dojo Moore programmes to a digital platform. Tonight, we're going to do a little bit of uh, VEX Robotics with you and through the Coding from Home workshop. So Coding from Home uses the VEX VR code to help you draw a pattern. And Jonathan Comerford from Science for Life is going to deliver that workshop with you. And I'd like to thank in advance Jonathan for making his time available and also David Hodge for the work they put into preparing this program. There is also a fantastic competition with a fantastic prize. So please don't forget to enter. Um, you submit your final image that you're content with to the VEX dot robotics at cit.ie email and Jonathan will put a slide up at the end and um, you will see that email clearer in case that you can't really hear properly what I'm saying and you just give us your name and address and um, we'll enter you into the competition. Like I say it's an amazing prize and um, don't miss out. So we're really really delighted that you've taken the opportunity to be with us tonight and we really really hope you enjoy the workshop. VEX Robotics really is a fantastic program and the coding is it's absolutely brilliant what you can do with code. So enjoy and I'll see you afterwards. Thank you. Jonathan here. I'm going to take you through the coding session to code a virtual robot and to take part you're going to need either a laptop or a tablet. I'm going to take us through the workshop from doing it on a laptop. The directions will be similar enough if you do use a tablet but I would recommend if you could uh, use a laptop or a personal computer. So today what we're going to do, we are going to draw a pattern using one of these virtual robots here that you can see in front of you. But before we get into it, I would like to do a quick overview of robotics. So what do we understand as a robot? For a lot of us, we're looking at these chaps here and these would be what we would consider a robot. So nowadays we have all different types of robots. Some robots um, look kind of a little bit human, like the guys on top here, these fellas. And you have robotics that also are used in factories. So if you're making cars or planes or any type of technology, usually robots will be involved and our idea of robots you know we can often think of maybe it's just these guys up here or maybe it's just these guys down here uh, or maybe this advanced robot here uh, he can actually move very like a human so robotics is all of that and what we are going to do today is we are going to take the basic concepts of robotics uh, such as coding so when you have a robot, you need to program the robot to work and to perform a specific task or to do a job for you. So all of these robots, the one thing that they have in common is that they are all helping, helping people and helping us in order to uh, perform a particular task. So robots, robotics, involves design, construction, operation, and the use of robots. So the goal of robotics is to design machines that can help and assist humans. So that's the most important part of robotics, uh, designing a machine that can help and assist humans. So for today's purposes, and for our little workshop, we're gonna take the simple idea of coding a machine to do a job, so coding a machine to help humans 
today our virtual robot is going to help us to draw a spiral so it's going to draw a design in a playground for us which I'm going to go into this little chap here his name is Ike he's actually the VEX mascot so today we're going to be using a software which is called VEX VR and VEX VR comes from the VEX Robotics company so VEX Robotics they are an educational robotics uh, company they make robots and they have worldwide competitions that are for uh, young adults and children where you go into a robot challenge and in this robot challenge you have to complete different tasks and you can win the game so we in MTU with other organizations around the country we have um, I think 200 teams um, between primary and secondary schools uh, where young Irish children are involved in coding robots in order to perform in these competitions and this one here that I have in front of me this is the VEX Robotics final uh, in the United States of America so it's a very very big tournament and uh, lots of fun and as I said we've got an Irish version so when things go back to uh, the way they used to be then we'll be back running our competitions as well which is going to be fantastic but for today we are using the virtual version of VEX okay so before we go into what exactly the virtual version of VEX is uh, as I said we are using it to program a robot to draw a pattern so in our VEX VR so when we are going to go onto our um, onto our VEX VR coding platform in a moment we're going to be using a robot that looks like this one here and with this type of coding the robot allows us to perform certain tasks because it has a few different uh, a few different features on it like it has a pen on top here which we're going to be using so we're going to be using the pen to draw our picture um, it also has wheels to move so it can go back and forward it can also move to the side and it has sensors as well that allows it to see how far away it is from certain distances so all of these different features here we are able to program so we are able to code them so that we can make our robot drive in the direction that we want it to drive and we can get it to draw the picture that we want it to draw and we will be doing that on what's called a playground or a virtual playground so a moment ago I showed you a very large playground so this is the playground in real life and if you can see here we can have the all of the robots are inside in these playgrounds these little uh, enclosures here and the robots are driving around but today we're going to have a virtual playground so it's going to be on the laptop on the computer and this is what a virtual playground will look like so we are going to be driving around in one of these virtual playgrounds and we are going to be drawing a picture in there so without without waiting too long we are going to jump into the the coding workshop so in order to do so you will the easiest way to do it is that you'll go to the website which is vr.vex.com which is here so vr.vex.com so open up your internet browser so open up firefox or chrome or internet explorer and go into your address bar and type in vr.vex.com and that's going to take you to the vex vr coding page and it's from here that we are going to uh, we are going to tell our new virtual robot that he's going to drive around the playground and he's going to draw a picture for us okay so while you're doing that you may also want to consider maybe get a calculator you don't necessarily need a calculator but it might be useful for you 
and a piece of paper, but it's not necessary 100%. You can do it without that. So what I'm going to do here now is I'm going to open up my own VEX VR, which is here. So as you can see, up in the corner, I've got vr.vex.com. So this is VEX VR. And this is how we are going to code our virtual robot. So this is what it should look like when you come into it. On your left, we have our different codes. So these relate to what we are going to make the robot do. So the drive train, this allows your robot to drive forward, turn right and turn left. We've got magnet, um, we've got looks where we'll find our pen and we've got controls and we've got a couple of other options here as well. So I'm not going to go into them in detail right now. We're going to get started straight away. So what I would like to do to get started is I'm going to just show you first of all the playground that we're going to be working with okay so up here on the top right we have a section here that says playground I'm going to click playground and this will happen so this is where we are going to be doing our drawing so this playground here doesn't have any numbers on it it's just a map of a grid and each one of these little squares here has a size which I'm going to go into in a moment and it's 200 millimeters by 200 millimeters each of these square blocks and that's going to be important in a minute but don't get worried about it no it's fine it will all become uh, it will become easy there in a moment what I want to do is go up here to this little drop down menu and we're going to change it to the number grid map. And the reason that I'd like to change the number grid map is because it just makes it easier to see how many sections we are actually jumping into as we're drawing the spiral. So as we're drawing the pattern. So we can see that we've got 10 squares up, 10 across, 10 down and 10 across again. So this makes it nice and easy. And this is our robot here in the corner. So here's our robot. And just to give you an idea of how it would look in a kind of a real world scenario. So this is our robot and we're going to draw him or we're going to tell him to drive around this playground and he's going to draw a pattern from us or for us on the playground. All right. So we're going to close this down for the moment. So click close. And we are going to start coding. <clears throat> Exciting stuff. Right. So first of all, we want to get a feel for the direction of the robot. We want to understand how he drives forward, how he turns. So in order to do that, <clears throat> we actually want to get him to drive around the first section of the playground so we want to get him to go and drive around in a square so just before we get him to do that i'm going to just pull this up one more time so that i can show you exactly what i'd like to get him to do so we'd like to get him to drive from this point from number one to number 91 and then from number 91 to 100 and 100 to 10 and then we're going to get him to drive back and we're going to get him to stop here. We're actually going to get him to stop at the number two. Is where we want to get him to stop. Okay. So. As I said. We need to get him to drive forward. From the number one to the number 91. As I said to start. And in order to do that. We want him. To drive. Forward. For a certain distance okay so we'll take this block so these are called blocks and these blocks have code and each part of the code 
will tell your robot to do a certain task or do a certain job. So we want our robot to drive forward for a certain distance. So the distance that we want him to drive forward for, we're going to pull up the playground here and we're actually going to leave the playground up on the side because it's easier for us to see. We're going to put it to the side and we'll be able to follow along where we want to go. Now, we're up here. So we want to get our robot to go from number one to number 91. So we want him to drive forward for this distance. So I know, because I've done the maths already, that the distance from here to here is 1,790 millimeters. So you don't need to check this yourself. You can if you want. So when I do that, that is actually going to get my robot to drive forward for 1,790 millimeters. And then what I need him to do is I need him to turn right and I need him to drive from number 91 to number 100. So therefore, I'm going to take this block here, which is turn right for 90 degrees. So 90 degrees is an angle. And what that means is that your robot is facing this way at the moment. So he'll drive up here. And then you want him to turn 90 degrees. And that means you basically want him to turn right all the way. So a 90 degree angle is this angle. So you're driving up here. And then you want to turn 90 degrees and you want to go over here. So this angle in here, that's the 90 degrees. So if he's turning right for 90 degrees, he's going to drive up here and then he's going to turn right and he's going to drive over here. So we need to get him to drive forward again for the same distance, which is 1,790 millimeters. And then we want him to turn right again and we want him to drive down here to this direction. So let's get him to turn right once again for 90 degrees and then we want him to drive forward once again for 1,790 millimeters and that will bring him to here down to the number 10 and then we want him to drive from the number 10 over to the number two. We don't want to bring him right back to the start because we want to have him sitting at the number two so that we continue on with our pattern in a moment. So to get him to go from the number 10 to the number two, we need to get him to first of all, turn right once again for 90 degrees. And we need him to drive forward again. But this time, we don't want him to drive forward for 1,790 because we want him to stop at the number two. If he was driving forward 1,790, he would end up back at the number one, but we want him to stop at the number two. So we are going to reduce the distance. We are going to shorten the distance from 1,790 and we're going to change the distance to 1,000. 571 and that will bring him to this part here okay so let's play that and let's see what happens so there he is driving up from number one up to number 91 he'll turn right 90 degrees and as you can see on the left here this is flashing, so it's showing you the section of the code that he's at. And then he'll turn right 90 degrees again, and he'll drive down here. And then he'll turn right 90 degrees again, and he should then stop at the number two. Perfect. So, 
we can understand that our robot will drive forward and he can turn and he can drive forward. He can drive forward different distances and he can turn at different angles. So what we want to do in our um, in our workshop today, so we can press this button here just to reset him. Let's put him back to the start. We actually want to draw a picture with the robot. So in order to do that, we are going to add in a pen. And the pen, if you go over to your left and go to looks, the purple one here, click on that. And you can see that we have move robot pen, set robot pen color. And we're, we're happy with that. We've got a pen. So we want to put a pen in earlier than we have with our current code. So to do that, we will grab your code. So left click on the mouse, grab your code, pull it down, and then we are going to set our robot pen color. So when started, you can see, when started, set the robot pen color to, let's do red. And then you also need to have another command, another job for the robot to move the robot pen down. And what that will do then, that means that when you start, when you press play here, that means you'll set a robot color, a robot pen color to red, and the pen is going to move down and it's going to touch the playground canvas and it's going to draw a picture. And what we're also going to do here is we're going to increase the speed of the robot as well. So that's not something that we did the last time. We're going to speed our robot up. So we're going to click on drive train here. And we're going to do go down here and we're going to set drive velocity. <clears throat> and we're going to drag that across. So left click and we're going to drop that in there. And we're going to set drive velocity to 100%. And the reason I'm doing that is we just don't want to be spending too much time uh, watching the robot uh, go around the playground. This will just speed him up a bit and uh, it'll just uh, make things a little bit faster. So we'll take the bottom section of our code that we had already. So this is the code that allowed him to drive around the playground and we're going to click that in to here. So what we've now done, we have now allowed our robot to draw on the page as he is driving around. So let's press play here again and let's watch him. So now you can see that he's drawing. So the red pen is drawing as he goes around. So the code is working the same as before, but he's gonna draw a line, a section of a square, okay? The next section of the workshop is that we're going to take this line and we are going to make him draw a spiral into the center of the grid. And what we'll be left with is a square spiral. So that's the plan and the way we're doing it is that we need to figure out the distance and the angles that we need to follow in order to get him from the start to the finish and he's going to finish up inside here. So we're going to use the code that we already have. So all the code that we have, we're going to continue to use that. We're not starting from scratch. So all of this code, keep this here. We're going to click reset so that we have our number grid back to the start. So we've already started and we've brought him back to number two. When he goes to the number two, we need him to continue on we need him to turn again and we need him to drive up to the number 82. And then we need him to drive from the number 82 to the number 89. And from the number 89, he'll go back down to 19 
and then he's going to go over to the number 13. So that's the next part of the drawing that we have to figure out. And we're going to use the same logic. So logic means the, the same commands, the same controls uh, that we had here. We are going to have him, he's going to keep driving forward, he's going to keep turning right, but the distances are going to change. And the distances are going to change by about 179 millimeters. So as you can see here from this one, we started off with a distance of 1,790 millimeters, and then I had to bring it down to 1,571 when I reached this section here, because this section was shorter. The distance from 10 to 2 is shorter than the distance from 10 to 1. And the difference between them is about 179 millimeters. So every time I change the distance, the distance is going to change by 179 millimeters. So if you wanted to do it on your own calculator, you're more than welcome to do it. I have all of this done out already, of course. So uh, I'll have the distances here and you can just follow along with me. You don't need to be worried about uh, figuring it out yourself. All right. So the next section that we're going to do, we're going to assume that we are on the number two here. And when we reach the number two, I'm actually going to play it forward so that we can, we can see where we are from or where we are at. So let's get him to fly around. So it's 100% velocity. This one here, this is making him move nice and fast. So you can change that around. You can move him faster and slower. So here he is at this section here. So I'm just going to stop it. So now we want him to go from the number two up to the number 82. So we need him to turn right by 90 degrees once again. So you can turn right. So we'll go over here and we'll turn right for 90 degrees. And then we're going to drive forward for 1571 again. So we don't need to change the distance because the distance from 10 to 2 is actually the same as the distance from 2 to 82 because we've got nine blocks. So the distance of the nine blocks is 1571. And then he's going to get to 82. And then he's going to drive to 89, right? But when he drives to 89, that is a shorter distance than it is for him to go to 90. So he's only going eight blocks. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So he had gone from nine blocks, which was from two to 82. And now we're going to reduce the distance. We're going to, we're going to shorten the distance again. And it's going to go to eight blocks. So he'll drive forward for 1,571 up to 82. And then he's going to turn right again for 90 degrees. And he's going to drive forward for the new shorter distance from the number 82 to the number 89. And that new shorter distance is 1,392. Oh, sorry that lad out. I already had it in. 1,392. And then he's going to turn right again and he's going to drive down from the number 89 to the number 19. So he's going to turn right for 90 degrees and he's going to drive forward for the same distance. He's going to be driving forward eight blocks and that's 1,392 again. And that's going to bring him up to the number 19. So when he gets to the number 19, he is then going to need to turn right once again. And he's going to need to drive forward to the number 13. So he's going to turn right for 90 degrees. And he's going to drive forward from the number 19 to the number 13 this time. So the distance from 19 to 13 is different. Once again, the distance 
is less than this distance here and once again it's less than by 179 millimeters and that distance is 1213. So I know I flew through that a little bit there now but I wanted to get the code out and you can follow along and you can watch me play my code here now to see if it works as you're working away and this is what yours should look like when you have done this section of the code. And as I said, you can follow along up here on the right, on the left, it'll follow down your code and show you exactly what section of your programming is playing out. So he's working away. And you can see that the distance has changed. It's gotten shorter. And then once again, the distance he stopped at number 13, so the shorter distance is becoming obvious. And we can see that we've started our spiral. So the spiral is starting to shake shape. So I'm going to continue on. And at this stage, I'm hoping that you're starting to understand the logic of what's happening here. You're driving forward, you're turning right by 90 degrees. You're driving forward, you're turning right by 90 degrees. The distance that you're driving becomes less and less the closer you get to the center of the grid. Next step, I need to go from the number 13 to the number 73, from 73 to 78, 78 to 28, and 28 back to 24. And the distances are going to keep getting less. And what you might notice if we go back to the code here is we might notice that we have a pattern starting to emerge. So a pattern, uh, the numbers are repeating themselves. We can see that it seems to be changing every two, every time the robot drives forward twice, the distance is changing. So aside from the first one, ignore that, but look at this from here. We've got 1790 and 1790. Then we've got 1571 and 1571. And we've got 1392 and 1392. And so we've got 1213. So our logic, our understanding of the pattern is that the next distance that the robot drives is probably going to be the same as this distance here. So for a change, we're going to take our mouse and we're going to right click on this block here. So the block that says turn right for 90 degrees, we're going to right click and we're going to duplicate. We'll actually do that again. So first of all, we'll just, we'll take this block, we'll just disconnect it, and we'll right click and we'll go duplicate. And that's automatically going to copy the exact block that you've just duplicated. And we're going to take that and then we're going to left click it onto this section here. So this just means that sometimes it's nice to be able to just take the code that you already have and copy it again, rather than going over here to the left all the time. So if you've got code, if you've got a command that you know that you're going to keep repeating, it's good to be able to do the right click duplicate and then drop your copied code uh, back in where you want it. So we're going to left click again and we're going to connect this back up here. So we've got turn right for 90 degrees, drive forward for 1213. So that's going to take us from the number 13 up to the number 73. And then from 73 to 78, we see that we've had this number twice. So now we're thinking that it's probably going to change again. It's going to reduce by 179 millimeters. And we then need to change the distance. So next time we'll turn right again. Let's go back over here and we'll use these ones. So we'll turn right for 90 degrees and we are going to drive forward for a distance from the number 73 to the number 78. But that distance is going to be 900 
and 84 millimeters. And then, because we think we know our logic, we are going to copy this section. So we're going to right-click, duplicate, and then we're going to click on our duplicated one on there and connect it back in again. So we've got 984 and 984. So at the moment now we're going to we're starting to think a little bit outside of just what we're seeing here in the playground and we're starting to look at our pattern and we're going to say well the pattern is following that we're turning right for 90 degrees and then we're going to drive a distance so we're actually going to do that again. So let's actually take this whole section here and we're going to duplicate this whole section and we're going to drop it on to this one here. But what we want to do is we've got, we know that we go for every, every time we drive forward twice, the distance changes and it reduces, it shortens by 179 millimeters. So that means we got one, two. So we now need to change the distance on this one and this one. And the distance is going to be 984 minus 179, and that is 805. 805. And we're going to continue with our guesswork. We're going to duplicate this one again, and we're going to drop it on. And we're going to... Go from our distances, so 805, 805, and then minus 179. Our distance is going to go to 626. And that's going to be again 626 because we're trying to remember the pattern that we're seeing. All right. So let's have a quick check just to make sure that everything is working okay for us. Let's reset the playground and press, press play. And let's see if we were correct in our code. Were we right to just keep taking away 179 millimeters? Like we can see the pattern in the numbers and the pattern in the numbers will create a pattern uh, on the art canvas then. So let's just watch him for a moment flying around. And you can create any type of pattern with the VEX Robotics. And you can actually create some quite uh, complex, quite difficult designs. And you can draw circles. And you can, you can do quite a lot with it, actually. This is a very simple design. But it's all about turning. It's all about angles. It's all about uh, knowing the distances and seeing the patterns. And so there we go, we're nearly in the center. And we can see that we've got a lovely spiral there created and things are working out well. So we were correct in our assumption. We were correct to think that we were reducing or we were shortening the distance by 179 uh, every, two, every two goes. So let's get back to that again. And we're going to, we're not going to duplicate this time. We're going to go back over to our main controls and we're going to finish off the pattern with the main controls. So the next one, we're nearly there. We're at the final stage. We need to turn right again. So turn right for 90 degrees. Drive forward four. four four seven turn right for 90 degrees and drive forward four four seven so there we've got four four seven is in twice that means we're going to change our number again so we need to turn right for 90 degrees and we need to drive forward the new distance is not 447, the new distance is 268. And we're going to turn right for 90 degrees. 
and then we're going to drive forward again for 268. And so then the next stage, we're going to turn right for 90 degrees and we're going to drive forward, not for 268, we're going to drive forward for 89. And then we're going to repeat that once again, we're going to turn right for 90 degrees. We are going to drive forward. For 89 millimeters. So that will actually bring you into the center of the maze uh, or of the pattern of the grid. And when we get into the center, we would like him to do a little uh, a little spin around. So in order to get him to spin around, he's basically just turning around and around. So we want him to turn right, but we don't want him to do it for 90 degrees. We actually want him to do it for 720 degrees. And I know you're thinking now, what is 720 degrees? What is that about? 720 degrees is literally, it just means you spin around. So 90 degrees, 180, 270, 360, and then around again back to the 720. So he's essentially, he's doing a spin around in the middle is what will be happening. And that should finish our code. That should finish it off nicely. And we should have a lovely spiral and he should be spinning around in the middle. So let's give that a go. And let's see if the code is working correctly. We could have changed the pen color here. We could have had an option of blue or black or green. And we could have taken him on a different journey. So we could have gone the opposite direction. And that would have meant that we are using uh, turning left instead of turning right. So we turned right for 90 degrees. Uh, a lot of times but if we were going the other way we'd be turning left for 90 degrees and that's what I like about this spiral workshop is that it just gives a very simple like when I was learning VEX I found that this was a really useful way for me to learn the distance learn about angles and learn about the basic concepts that are needed to I suppose to get around with VEX, I mean, there's all sorts of different playgrounds that you can take part in, but they all use the same type of logic. It's all the same commands. It's all drive forward, turn right, put the pen up, put the pen down. Uh, in a more complex playground, you'd be using sensors, um, which just, I suppose, it, it makes the robot do a lot more on its own as well, which is also quite cool. But anyway, our robot has managed to make his way into the center of the playground and he has drawn his spiral. And I hope that your spiral is as nice and sharp as mine. One thing to note is that if you were doing this in the real world, uh, when you're drawing on a playground, so imagine this playground here that I have in front of me. Imagine that that is actually a real world playground, like a big you know, several feet. So you've got a real robot here. Sometimes when you're drawing on a real playground, the lines, they won't work or they won't be as sharp depending on how fast your robot is going. So it doesn't really matter so much for the VEX VR, but if you were in a real playground, you would probably not be able to drive around as fast as we are. So if you remember back to the beginning, we set the drive velocity to 100%. If you were in the real world and if you had a real pen uh, on a big playground that was the size of a room, like I showed you at the beginning, um, like in the United States in the finals and also what we do here 
um, in MTU with several other organizations around the country. If you were driving too fast, your pen will skip. It will be like this pen will skip off the floor. So you would need to change this. So this drive velocity, probably in a real world, you would probably need to make the speed much less. So slow down your robot. Uh, but we don't need to for, for this one, which is great. So that is the main part of the workshop. Before we finish up, we are going to add on one small extra piece. We're going to move away from the number playground and we are going to open up a new playground before we finish. So if you go up here to the drop down and if you open up the art canvas. So the art canvas, it's just a completely blank canvas. So we don't have numbers on it. So we'll be able to see our spiral without, without all of the numbers underneath it. Okay, so the final part is that we want to get our spiral onto the art canvas. And we want to make one final little addition. And uh, you can add whatever you want to this after as well. So as you can see here, our robot has moved into the center of the art canvas. So we did start off down here earlier on, but not anymore, now we're in the middle. So for us to start to draw our spiral on this canvas, we need to get the robot from here over to here. And I decided that I'd like him to draw as he's going along his way. So what that means is we need more code, of course. So what I'd like to do is I need to get a piece of code that's going to take the robot from the middle over to here. There's a couple of ways you can do it. This is the way that I decided to do it. First of all, take your code from the drive velocity and just unclick it here. And we are going to add a new section of code into here. That's going to get him from the middle over to here in the left left hand corner. So what I want to do is I'm going to add in a control as if we were uh, on a real playground. So what you need to do is you need to wait a second or two in the real world for your pen to hit the ground before you can start. So I'm actually going to say to wait two seconds. So in the control section here, it'll say wait two seconds. So when started, I'm going to put the robot pen to red. I'm going to move the pen down and I'm going to wait two seconds. And after I've waited two seconds, I go back up to my drive train here. I'm going to turn right for 45 degrees. So I'm going to do half of the 90 degrees. So once again, we're still on the angles, but I want my robot, I want him to face over this direction and I want him to reverse. I want him to back in here, then I want him to straighten up and then I want him to drive off and make his spiral. So to do that, I need him to turn himself 45 degrees over to the right hand side. And then I want him to drive backwards. So here we have drive forward, but I want him to drive backwards. I want him to reverse and I need him to reverse for 1,308 millimeters. And the only way that I got that is by testing it myself. That's the only way. So that's the distance from here to here, 1,308 millimeters. And then I need him to straighten himself up. So I need him to turn left for 45 degrees that will straighten him back up again and then when he turns left for 45 degrees I want him to once again I want him to wait for one second just so that he's straightened himself up and once he's straightened himself up I want him to fly off around the grid so flying off around the grid means attach on my old code and away he goes. And let's for a change, change the pen color to, let's change it to blue.
So there he goes. He made his way from the center. He made it over to the left hand corner and now he's flying around doing his spiral. <clears throat> and that concludes our workshop for today. I hope you've enjoyed and what you can do yourself is you can use this information about distance and angles and you can draw your own pictures. So after he finishes the spiral you could turn this into let's say a spider's web. You could probably use the 45 degree angles and you could even change the angles. You could half 45 degrees again and you could make it even more complicated and you could turn this into a very very um, I suppose a very detailed web is what you could make it look like and like you can draw names you could draw circles and um, there's all different types of options available and it's great fun so that concludes our um, code at home session and once again thanks for coming along and enjoying it uh, we hopefully will have more sessions like this in the future and um, I hope you'll also join us for those so I'll let you go there and have a wonderful evening thanks for joining us and uh, take care bye now So thank you for joining us this evening. I, I really hope that you enjoy that workshop, that you had fun with the coding and that you learned loads. Um, just a quick reminder, don't forget to enter the competition and hopefully win um, an amazing prize, um, a VEX IQ robot for your very own. Um, so as I said previously, submit your um, drawings to vex.robotics at cit.ie. So thanks again to Jonathan for delivering and for David, Hodge and Jonathan for working on it together. We hope you really enjoyed it. And I hope that maybe I will see some of you or lots of you um, coming into an MTU to do courses in the future. So thanks again. Um, mind yourselves. Cheerio.